I always say I'm so excited <laughs> that, I, <laughs> that I am excited to have this conversation with you, Diane. And we had a pre-conversation and I'm dying to ask you, um, I don't do introductions. I like to deep dive immediately. So my Let's question go. is, people say, I feel that there's something more to it, but I don't know what it is. I feel this, but I don't know what it is. What is that? It doesn't make sense to me, to be honest. Well, in my way of looking at it, that is our soul, our essence, our connection to the greater universe pushing to be emerged. So kind of like a birth in a way, but in an energetic and a spiritual way that we're here with something more than this linear life. We're here for something more than that. So when that, that energy starts coming through, that's, that's our deeper essence saying, pay attention to me. I have something here. Pay attention to me. I have something here. And in my experience, if you ignore it, it'll just keep following you around till you pay attention. So, so, so we're stuck in that linear highway of expectations, what we've learned at school and at university, college, whatever, and, mm -hmm. and our job and our parents and their siblings and TV and newspaper, everything around us. But you're saying there is this energy that although every, everything seems to be in that linear direction, somewhere inside of you, it's saying, I, I want to be there as well. Is that what right. you're saying? Yes, it's 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 a yes and for me. And you know, a lot of people say, well, it's all just the essence or spiritual thing, whatever. And other people are like, no, it's very linear and straight, like a you know, Excel spreadsheet life. Hmm. I think it's both. It's like a tandem, right? It's like where we have an essence that's much greater than our physical body. And and there's all kinds of information and research on that, right? And evidence of that. So if we have an essence that's greater than the two-dimensional linear time and space that we are stuck in in this three-dimensional world, if there's something else, then it would make sense to me that if we're paying attention to our inner dialogue, that inner landscape, we would then start noticing that there's maybe a yearning or a thirst or a drive or a desire for something that has more far-reaching impact, but also is for the good of all. Like, that's how I differentiate it. If something's coming up and it's like selfish or it's me, 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 then that's more of our linear brain trying to fool us, right? But if it's for the good of all, and I mean like all, the planet, the rocks, the, the birds, the, the animals, people, ourselves, all, meaning everything, right? Um, then to me, that's that essence part of us trying to bring balance, trying to like, yes, and like, okay, let's come into harmony instead of being so siloed. If that makes any sense. I hope it's making sense. It does make a lot of sense. So it, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm processing, I'm, I'm resonating, I'm, I'm doing everything, hopefully. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, I, I love this, you know, for, for the good of all, some people ask me, what is a nonlinear thinker? And for me, nonlinear thinking is not just being creative and unexpected in your thinking. For me, for the good of all, always comes back. And I like that, that it's when you're saying the linear way, the me, 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 myself and I, and my money and my career, that's not for the good of all, right? No, not necessarily. I mean, somebody could use that for the good of all, but that's not where it starts. No, it's, it's, we're not saying it's bad, but it's, right. it doesn't cover everything. Correct. Oh, absolutely. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So when, when someone comes to you and, and is stuck saying, this is, I'm so curious about this. So this, this person feels somewhere there is something mm -hmm. but as soon as the thinking starts it's immediately in this linear process yes first question how do you 
how do you deal with that? And second of all, or maybe, no, 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 forget about it. This, the second question is more interesting. What happens to you when someone says to you, this is bullshit, this is absolutely nonsense. You know, this is, this linear structure is what it is. It's clear, it's there. Why do you need to go to that emotional flow of energy and there's something more? It is what it is. And, 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 I, and when a person says, this is nothing for me, what happens with you then? Because we both know these kind of people and that already sounds far too negative than what I'm trying to say, those kind of people. That's the wrong sentence. Forgive me, I'm not native English as you can listen here in my accent. So it, it, I'm, I'm not finding the right words. Those kind of people is not nice. But what happens to you when someone says that and saying, you know, this is, this is bullshit? basically. Um, I get it all the time. <laughs> People say it in different ways to me all the time. And it a lot depends on where I am in the moment. But normally, I just love them from a distance. I know that sometimes people are sleepwalking, I call it, or they're not awake, and they're not paying attention. And I don't hold it against them. I just love them un the unconditional kind of love because they're another being. They're trying to make their way in the world just like I am or anybody else. And I don't really engage with it. If they think it's crazy, they can think it's crazy. Like, that's okay. I know it's not. And I also know that that part of them is eventually going to start to wake up. And anything that I say with them in any conversation is a seed planted. Mm -hmm. And I really like hold the intention that that seed will someday germinate and that person will get relief from their, from their strictness that they've got themselves boxed, in, boxed into that prison. But personally, I just, I just open my heart and give them a little extra love because it's a lonely place to be. Hopefully you will never say, oh, you're not there yet. Because I, when, I, when I run into people that say to me, oh, you're not there yet, that, that for me is always so condescendent, like, oh, I understand everything and you're not there yet. It's okay. You will eventually get there. I find that always very difficult. Um, so how does it work? What happens when someone comes to you and say, Diane, I, I feel there's something more to it, but I can't wrap my head around it. What do you do? The first thing I do is reassure them that there's no word or no language that will be able to wrap around it. And so that experience of, I have this feeling and I can't put it in words, I can't wrap my head around it. It's totally normal that they're not crazy and that there is no word to go to it because it transcends words. Mm -hmm. You know, much of our life transcends language and, and English is like the least effective language to describe these things of any language on earth. And so usually, you know, some of the people I work with that are bi or trilingual have a little bit better of a time because they have more resources language wise. And at the same time, language can only point like a road sign because what we're talking about has no words. So that first thing I do is help that person um, kind of be comfortable, like take it, you know, be able to exhale and not think they're crazy or something's wrong with them. Because usually when they come to me, they think they're crazy or something's wrong with them. And I'm like, no, 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 there's something wrong with you. And then, and then we start exploring the essence of the feeling. Um, usually we use art or music or meditation or nonverbal ways to just kind of touch and play with it. And then once a person's making more friends with the feeling, it's not like this foreign bad thing, but it's like, oh, this feels kind of good. Then they're able a little bit more to start massaging it into wherever it is they want to take it. What do you think would happen if all of a sudden it becomes a trend to be open-minded? If really, all of a sudden it, it becomes what? I didn't hear you completely. A trend. So it, it becomes a hype to become open-minded, right? What, what, what would happen with the world, you think? <laughs> oh, we could only wish that people would become open-minded. <laughs> um, you know, it, 
I think there would be a lot of people rejoicing in like hallelujah. And I think there would be a lot of people who would be terrified of it. And, um, and then there would be people who would like probably be indifferent um, on some level. But I mean, personally, if, if everybody became open-minded and like even open-minded people or people who say they're open-minded could be more open-minded. Oh, let's talk about that. Because some people need, say they're open-minded, but by saying you're open-minded already proves that you're maybe not that open-minded. Well, the, see, you know, another thing, Perry, is, is I, I think that the world is always expanding. Like our universe is expanding in unity, diversity, and complexity in my world. And, and so no matter how much work we've done on ourselves or how open-minded we are or how visionary we are, it doesn't matter. If we're still in human form, we're still working on it and everything's still expanding. So that it's impossible to be to the end. It's instead of the finish line, it's more like mom markers, right? And we're all on the road, hanging out, doing our thing. And the real better question for me is, how's it working? If what you're doing is working great, then go with it. And then when it's not working great, make a shift. The universe will tell you if it's the right move or not, but you know, for you. So, so even people, I love people. I call them pseudo spiritual, actually the ones who say, well, I know I've got it all. And I'm like, well, the moment you say that you just showed your ignorance, you just showed that your ego took over and it's not true. It, none of us have it all and we're not going to. <laughs> that's part of the cool mystery and paradox of it all. To me, that's like where the juice is, is you can't wrap your linear mind around it. Would it be, so what I'm thinking now is as soon as we describe or use a word, we box it anyway. By using a language, we box it. Like if, yeah. if I say I'm open-minded, it's already boxed because mm -hmm. of the language. So would it be, would it be very cool to co communicate with less? Yes. And just, and just connect and, and, and give it. I, I, I'm a huge fan of this TV series, which is called uh, First Dates. It's two people, they go to a restaurant and they date for the first time, right? Mm -hmm. I love that. End of the day, daddy has a cup of tea and watches his first date. I love that series. And I see two strangers together and they're communicating with each other. They're mm -hmm. looking for a relationship. Very boxed, everything. Anyway, and, and then the worst thing that can happen always if, is when there is a quiet moment. And, and most of the times when there is a quiet moment, uh -huh. it's very uncomfortable because both have nothing to say anymore to each other or, or are being a bit annoyed or both too shy to communicate. And there is this silence and this silence isn't very beautiful. Then you have people that create a silence in a spiritual way, but then it's already boxed again. You know, let's be quiet and look at each other's eyes. Ugh. Right. Let's not say this. Let's let let it just happen, right? Right. Um, what is that difficulty we have with silence? Why do we need to talk all the time? Why can we not just look each other in the eyes and and just connect? And even on Zoom. I think we both agree that we even now connect, even though oh, yeah. I'm in Europe and you're in the US and there's this dark fiber optic cable through the ocean and sending zeros and ones. And this is what we see, but there's still this brain connection. Right. The brain still harmonizes and still connects, even right? though it's video. Yes. Immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why do you think it's so difficult? to have quietness or to have these moments where it's complete stillness. I think that over the um, generations, hundreds of years, humans have been increasingly conditioned to more noise, more external viewpoint, looking outside for the answers. And so that have been totally disconnected from their own inner essence. And so when I'm 
with you if I'm disconnected from me. I don't know how to be because I'm looking to you to tell me. And so I lovingly, in a, in a humorous kind of way, um, one day I was going off about this and I said, you know, I'm going to blame this on Aristotle. I think that's where this all started. And, and everybody was laughing at me, but I'm like, you know, Plato is real clear about the inner landscape in the inner world. And Aristotle said, oh, no, no, it's outside of us. Mm -hmm. Moment people got pointed outside of us, we started to deny our own inner essence. And then that's just been, you know, and then as culture has moved forward, it's been reinforced and it's especially reinforced in men. You know, you're, men aren't allowed to have feelings. They're not allowed to be spiritual. They're not allowed to have all those things. And so it's even harder for men, you know, but I think we've been trained away from it. And it's time that people started realizing that that probably wasn't the most effective way to, <laughs> to keep going forward, that there's much more going on. And so people are uncomfortable because they don't ever do it and they don't know how to do it. Nobody taught them what to do and that it's okay. Like just to be quiet and feel the essence and be connected. Like I give some, I give some of the couples I work with and I do it in some of my big retreats where I have people sit like knee to knee, like, so there's close enough that their knees aren't quite touching, but only a couple inches apart, square on each other and then look at each other's eyes. And then when you feel a feeling shift in you close your eyes. And then when that changes again, open your eyes. And so there's times where both people's eyes are closed and one's opens one. And they get to have the experience of the natural biological and neurological flow of what we call emotion without having to describe it, talk about it, explain it, and use the other person as that connector. And most of the time, people either have a hard time at first and there's giggling and laughing and moving and squirming and people have to go to the bathroom and, you know, just any kind of distraction. It's really quite funny. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of times people get those tears coming out of their eyes because they've never really been given permission to just in a safe way, just be with another human. Wow. Can we, can we do an experiment? Can we sure. have some fun? Can we create? I have no idea. We didn't talk about this. Um, <laughs> can we? Because this is, again, you know, a conversation. I ask questions, you answer, and it's hopefully a lot of fun. Can we do something that shows how we can connect? And mm -hmm. maybe for others who are watching this, Mm -hmm. even though it's a recording they right. can connect as well i think it's possible i always talk about the mycelium network of brains it's the connection we're making right now can we make a connection a strong connection that is even stronger than it is already right now uh -huh. so we can show that and then when people see the recording they can connect to that connection as well can we right. would that be possible I think it's possible because I really believe that already our brains are mirroring each other and are already, there's that rapport and connection. Well, I felt it with you in our first conversation when we very first met, the moment the video came on and we started talking, my being, I'm getting goosebumps already, my soul, my being goes, oh, he's, he, you can talk to him. Like he's good. He's a good one. You know, like one of those, it was an immediate knowingness and I'd never even heard your voice before. No. But I knew, I knew without words or explanation. And I, um, that day I smiled the whole rest of the day. I was, just giggle, I was like a giggling little kid. Like, oh, I met, I met another person who gets me. Like another, you know, like it was obvious. And so, of course, we can create a connection. But I think everyone's even already doing it, feeling it. Maybe by talking about this already is starting. I, I would like to ask people to really listen to your voice and, and really, because I have the same experience with you. I, I, you were sitting on the balcony. We were having fun, right? And you were with your iPhone. And it's that you feel it. I feel it here immediately. So mm -hmm. it's, it's not here, it's here. Yes. And you listen to someone's voice and you allow 
maybe to remove all the, the extra noise and, and connect directly to that person. I don't know, you know I'm, I don't know how to describe this, but this is how I see it. Well, I, I think so too. Like I feel it kind of a little higher. I feel it in my high heart usually. Mm -hmm. um, and then I know, and then it's like my, my being feels it. And then I know because of the years of working with it, that there's that knowingness and I don't have to understand it or explain it. The moment I released having to understand or explain, I was free. And I could just like be in that conversation or that relationship, whatever it was and be totally fine. And then the other thing that I've noticed that happens, and I wonder if it happens for you sometimes too, is I'll get like these little chill bumps or goosebumps when I'm, when I'm talking about or on the right track. It's almost like the energy of the universe divine is going, yeah, go down that road, go down that road, go down that road. And it happened. And I'm like, okay. And then it just like brings an elegant simplicity to things that... Again, there's no words for, but there it's beauty beyond measure. Yeah, I'm. I'm. <laughs> I've never, I've never told anyone this. Um, <laughs> how how I experience this is when I think everybody recognizes when you hear a song for the first time, it gives you goosebumps. You know, this is right. spot on for me, right? Mm -hmm. I have that with people, like you said, you hear someone's voice you see someone's face whatever there's this connection and it's not always goosebumps but it's also it's it's i always describe it as goosebumps in my brain so it's it's the same sensation as on your arm it's in my head uh -huh. it's very strange and and i always call that a brain orgasm it, <laughs> I love it. It's it's like this. It's it's I can't describe it, but it's it's happening now, of course. And mm -hmm. it's 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 such an amazing feeling. And whenever that happens, I know I'm okay. Yes. You know, this yep. person is. I'm going to continue with that. And if I don't, so the side effect is if I don't have that feeling, I'm always wondering, hmm, what's happening? Why is that? I don't mind. It is what it is. I'm just not having this sensation. Um, trying not to convince anyone is my biggest theme in life. I don't want to convince anyone. It, it's right. just what it is. But that feeling, that that inner system is was telling you it's okay. This is mm -hmm. this is wonderful. Yeah, I wish everybody would be able to feel that and experience that and be aware of that. I think everybody feels it, but not everybody's aware of it. And I was just going to say that I think everybody has those experiences. And if they're not aware of them, it could go right on by, you know, and they don't even notice, or they could feel it and still do nothing with it because they don't know it's a thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> and that's a beautiful thing. Like that experience is it's there's no word to go with it it's that elegant beauty of that of the universe like you know when you look at the flowers or you i go out, i love the moon and I, i'm out looking at the moon or the stars at night or anything that's in that in the natural world it there's no words for the beauty of that not really we can talk about it but ah there's so much more there's so much more is it, isn't it the same thing when we see a flower? We already get linear conditions what to say about the flower and not really, really see the flower or the stars or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I strongly have that when we see something beautiful in nature. Oh, that's a beautiful flower. It's, you know what I mean? It's, yes. Yeah, I don't have to explain. No. Yes, I, and so... One of the practices I do um, is when I'm out in nature, especially if there's a flower <laughs> that I run into, I um, just kind of hang out with the flower, like me and the flower. Like I let my heart and my, my being just kind of be with the flower or the tree or the, you know, whatever. And I just hang out there for a minute 
and just breathe and feel my feet on the earth and feel the breeze or whatever, you know, is happening. And I just let myself just like be almost like, um, I become one with the flower in that way. And then I see the world differently. I feel the breeze differently. The sun is different. The clouds are different because there's an expansion from my own little linear. Oh, that's a purple flower. That's a blue flower. That's a white flower. Or what it's kind a, of it, it, yeah, what kind of flower is that? Yeah. So <laughs> who cares what kind of flower it is? I don't care the name of it. Um, I love them all. And it's funny because one of the things I do in my nonlinear fun way that you will totally understand, but a lot of people think I've lost my mind, but that's okay. I, is, I think that sometimes the world's going a little goofy. So I've decided that, you know, my, my mission in life is to help humans save themselves from themselves and to bring light to the world in whatever way that I can. So when I'm on social media, um, I almost always put a picture, just a picture of a flower and then hashtag joyful moments. And that's all I do. I say nothing else. I just put the flower there. And 90% of the time people name the flower for me and that's nice. That's not why I'm putting it there. It's an invitation to be just a little bit deeper or maybe just a little bit more aware. And um, it's also a way of putting beauty in the world when it gets goofy. So when I see a bunch of negativity all over, I'll just put up some flowers here or there like, hello, there's more going on here, you know? Um, but I'm always intrigued by what people say to it. Like, especially the naming of them. People, a lot of people who call themselves open-minded and you know, mindful and spiritual and all those words, they're the first ones to name it. Yeah. I just find that an interesting observation. I just laugh. I smile. I love it. I think it's all good because it's grist for the mill, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's how we're trained, right? We're trained at school to name the flower. Yes. It's important to know the name of the flower. It means you have knowledge. That's correct. And, and in some places, that's all that's revered. Yeah. And uh, there's much more. Cool. Do you think people felt the connection? Yes. I think so. I think so too. And I think if somebody hasn't felt the connection and they breathe a little bit more and give themselves more air and just hang out with us for a minute, then they'll start to feel the connection because sometimes they have to give themselves internal permission. And the best way to do that is with exhaling. It's, um, I meet a lot of clever people, highly gifted people mm -hmm. are in the octopus movement. And I keep asking them, can you just build this machine of Star Trek where there is a beat me up Scotty button on my shirt and I can be touching that button and I'm next to you in your room and I can give you a hug. And then I press the button back and I'm back in Europe and I'm behind mm -hmm. my desk again. <laughs> please people can you invent this for me <laughs> that would be awesome right and right. i don't have to be there to give you a hug i get that we, we're connected right. already but to give that that extra dimension to it and just right and i think the physical dimensionality is not bad i think a lot of people try to make it bad what do you mean you know, by that i i, I know a lot of, i hear it is that, well, once I become more aware, whatever those words are and, and evolved and transformed or whatever word people's using, mm -hmm. then there's like this world denying kind of thing, like being in the human body is bad or get me out of here, or you don't have to actually be close to somebody because you can do it energetically. Yeah. Well, I think, I think it's both. I think it's yes to all of it. You know, there's value in all of it and it's different value in all of it. And one excluding the other is missing the point on the other side. Yeah. I'm happy and you're saying that. I'm happy you're saying that because it, I think that's absolutely true because whenever things get complicated, we, we like to simplify things. And mm -hmm. then we look at it in a black and white matter. And then, you know, it's like, oh, 
then everything is energy and then that's enough. Or, and it's not. And it's also not with nonlinear and linear thinking. Right. I love linear thinking as well. And, and we need structure and we need to create and we need to build and we need government and we need, it's and, and we need to bring that in balance with each other. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah. If we, if you and I were unable to do linear thinking because we were so married and all this non-linear thinking, we wouldn't be having this conversation because who would have been able to like fill out the form and click on the Zoom link? No. Like we need that. It's yes and totally. Yeah. Yeah. And when I hear people go one way or the other, just to the exclusion, I'm like, oh no, that's a sad place to be. I think, you know, I send lots of love and compassion. They'll figure it out you know, what the right balance is for them. But I really think it's yes to all of it. <laughs> it's yes to all of it. I have to write it down. So what I, what I always do uh, during conversations like this, mm -hmm. I always write something down that would be a good one-liner on, on your picture that I can share on social media. And I, it's always one sentence and it's, the perfect one but with you it, this is new to me i have already one two three four five six sentences <laughs> i have to choose from um not knowing is freedom for the good of all what we're talking about has no words i like that elegant beauty of the universe hang out with the flower and yes to it all so <laughs> We will choose, yeah. right? Yeah. The it's right thing. I believe that in, in your creative process, my creative process with my work and in everybody's, if we allow ourselves to be open and in the flow of that process and the yes and part of it, then the right words, the right thing will show up for us to express it in a way that can be received by others. Because that's a part of it too, right? Is to be able to, somehow translate the message in a way that others can hear it. And that's what a lot of people say about me is like, I'm able to go into somebody's world and be in their world with them and then speak to them in that language. And then hear what, what they're not saying, usually the non words about what's up and then help walk them toward different directions to bring that synthesis for them. Right. So that's the beauty is to be able to take what we can see and feel and make it enough of a thing for others to be able to understand, take in, receive, and then they'll do whatever they're going to do with it. And, you know, it would be nice if people would take things in that are kind of different within what they believe in and are, let it integrate into their system and see what it does, see how it is. You can always go back to the old way. You can always go back to the old way. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's another now, sentence. It's comfortable and it's really hard and, and you won't want to, but you know, you have to give, sometimes you got to give the ego permission, right? We'll go back the old way if we don't like it. And then of course that won't happen, but sometimes we have to have that little conversation with the small mind in our head. <laughs> I hope everybody is watching that they are connected and, and they can feel it. Um, we will share more information about you um, so they can connect with you as well, Diane, right? Um, thank you so much. This was, you are so welcome. <laughs> this was wonderful and, and um, very interesting, very short. Maybe we should do a second one soon. Um, sure. But for now, I think this, this is the essence of what we wanted to talk about. I think, and, and maybe we need to do a, a, a second conversation soon. Right, we can do a second one and um, see where that goes. That's always fun. Let's do that. Thank you so yeah. much. I really enjoyed it. I really felt it. Mm -hmm. And thank you very much. You are so welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>